In preliminary design analysis, to understand how the system will perform under specific operating conditions, we need to analyze a scale model to predict how the full-size body will behave. This approach can be applied to airplanes, buildings and nearly any process that you could think of. In this lesson, we are going to see how we can develop governing equations in a non-dimensional form that will let us extend a single solution to a large number of different similar problems. And also how we can make sure that the scale models will be effectively representative of the real model. Let's start with the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. This form of the equations assumes that the density is constant and also we are not including the body force terms. The energy equation we are presenting here is expressed in terms of temperature. The simplification process of the equations into this form will be presented in the next section. So now let's focus on this set of equations and see how we can recast them into the non-dimensional form. First, we need to introduce some non-dimensional variables into the equations. As you can see here, the different dimensional terms are divided by the reference values, like L0 and Rho0, in order to make the star quantities non-dimensional. It is important to note here that the reference time scale is based on the characteristic length and the characteristic velocity, and the characteristic pressure is based on reference density and velocity. For external flows, the free stream values can be used as reference quantities. Going through each equation and substituting the non-dimensional terms we just defined, we can recast the equations in their non-dimensional form. Reported here are the mass equation and the three moment equations. As you can see, they look similar to their dimensional form with the only difference that in the viscous terms we have this term that is uh, the first non-dimensional parameter, the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is the ratio between the product of density, velocity and length to viscosity. It represents the ratio of the inertial forces to the viscous forces. This tells us that low Reynolds number flows are dominated by viscous forces. These sort of flows are defined as laminar flow. As an example, if we pour motor oil, we will see that this really viscous fluid will smoothly flow down by the effect of gravity. That is a laminar flow. On the other hand, high Reynolds number means that the inertial forces are dominating the viscous forces. In this case, the viscous effects are limited to very narrow regions near the walls, the boundary layers, and in between different flow streams, the shear layers. High Reynolds number flows are always turbulent. This motion can be easily visualized when you have fluids that are mixing energetically, as the one in this animation. You can see that the ink quickly starts mixing with water and also the colors get mixed together due to this strong turbulent motion. Next, let's analyze the non-dimensional form of the energy equation. As you can see, even this equation looks similar to its dimensional counterpart. And as for the other equations, we have a bunch of non-dimensional numbers that appear on the right-hand side term. Also, we have this new phi term that is representing the viscous dissipation. So, let's analyze what these new derived groups are. The first one is the prime number. 
that represents the ratio between viscous diffusion and thermal diffusion. This means that if the prime number is less than 1, thermal diffusion is larger than the viscous diffusion, meaning that the heat propagates through the flow faster than the flow motion. This essentially tells us that the heat transfer through the fluid mostly happens through conduction instead of convection. On the other hand, if the prime number is larger than 1, the heat propagation through the flow will be slower than the flow motion, meaning that the heat transfer through the fluid will happen mostly by convection instead of conduction. Note that the product of the Reynolds number and the Prun number is sometimes defined as the Peclet number. Let's analyze now the viscous dissipation term. There the Brinkman number appears. This number is representing the ratio of the heat generated due to viscous dissipation to the heat exchanged by conduction. The ratio of the Brinkman number to the Pram number is sometimes defined as the Eckert number. Now, these are just some of the non-dimensional numbers that arise from the non-dimensional forms of the equations. Many other exist. For example, if we include the gravitational effects in the governing equations, the Froon number will appear. The Froon number is the ratio of the inertial forces to the gravitational body forces and is an important number for naval architecture as it correlates with the resistance of a ship's hull. This number is also used to analyze water waves motions. Other examples of non-dimensional numbers are the Rayleigh number that indicates if the boundary layer will be laminar or turbulent in natural convection, and the Mach number that is really important to characterize compressible flows. The Mach number is the ratio of the flow speed to the speed of sound. If this ratio is less than 1, the flow is moving slower than the sonic speed, so subsonic speed. And if the Mach number is higher than 1, we will have a supersonic flow. More details will be given in later courses on these and other non-dimensional numbers as the need arises. As we have seen, the non-dimensional forms of the Navier-Stokes equations are similar to their dimensional form. The main difference is that non-dimensional parameters will arise in the equations. The importance of these equations is that any solution of this set of equations will be representative to a class of similar problems, meaning that one single solution will be valid for many cases that present dynamic similarity. The dynamic similarity can be ensured when the relevant dimensionless parameters are the same for different cases. Now, let's see an example for this. Let's take a model and a full-scale object that we want to examine in an experimental facility. In order to replicate the full-scale conditions on the scale model, we need to match the Reynolds number for the full-scale case. This means that we have to counterbalance the change in characteristic length of the body, modifying either density, viscosity or velocity. One possible approach is to use a fluid with different density and viscosity. Another approach will be to change the reference velocity. For example, if we are using a one-tenth scale model of a police car in a wind tunnel, we will need to blow air 
at a velocity 10 times bigger than the wind velocity for the full scale case. However, if we test the model in water instead of air, we will need about the 60% of the full scale case velocity. In this lecture, we analyzed how to obtain a non dimensional form of the Navier Stokes equations so that we can apply the same solution to a class of similar problems. We also define how the dynamic similarity is connected to the Reynolds number and how we set a scale model to represent a full-scale system.